Uh-oh, something's about to happen. Okay, all right, the car's dead at the top of a hill, and I have a, I feel like this is a roller coaster ride gone wrong. I'm now going backwards, the brakes are dead, the car is dead, the engine won't start. And you can do this from outside the car? I can do it from a mile away. Oh, really? When you drive an automobile today, you are driving a big computer system that happens to have wheels and a motor. There's almost nothing in your car that is not mediated by a computer. When you step on the gas pedal, it is not directly controlling the fuel oxygen mixture. Rather, it is telling a computer that you, the driver, wish to go faster. And then it decides the right way to do that. Not only are they networked to each other so that the brakes can talk to the engine for stability control and so forth, but they're also networked to the outside world. Effectively, your car is on the internet. The CAN network, or CAN bus, is a network within the car that allows all the pieces to communicate. Everything can read and write to the CAN bus and pretty much is always listening for commands from the CAN bus. It is not easy to hack a car. The sophistication level is pretty high. Each car has a different language, each piece speaks different words, and not all those pieces have been mapped publicly. Cars have the same kind of chips that computers and cell phones have. All of these parts can be bought online for relatively cheap. You use these to plug into portions of the ECU. You can communicate directly with the ECU or with the mobile chipset and tell it to run commands that you want. Tell it to increase the amount of fuel that it's getting. You can tell it to go faster, release the trunk, hit the brakes. There is not a motivation aside from simple theft that would necessitate developing the skills, which are not insignificant required to do this. Then there's a surveillance aspect. We showed how we could remotely track the car and listen to what was being said. That said, there is not a terrible threat right now, in part because the cost is high. As the pieces of hardware required to experiment become more readily available, as there's more literature explaining how it works, as the cost goes down, then you know people can be more innovative in how they might take advantage of it. I'm Alberto Garcia Aguera, I'm from Spain, I work in software security. And we made a piece of hardware that we have right here. It is called CHT, Car Hacking Tool. Yeah, it's not very original, I know. We were invited to Black Hat Singapore to solve our last research, the CHT device. And you just have to put these two wires in, in the Cambus network, that's it. It costs 25 bucks. You can buy the components in any place. Right now, the size of the, of the CHT is like an iPhone, more or less, but it can be smaller. Car hacking is a very interesting field. People don't think about security. You can connect from your house with your computer to your car. That's really scary. You can just walk by and just implant the device. So imagine that I just go and approach to a car, I connect the CHT and I just go to my home I can't control the car, it's very easy. Once you connect it, you can just remotely use it to manipulate anything. You can just notice that your car is going to the right and you are not turning the, the wheel. You can activate the handbrake. When you do this thing, you are just sending some kind of packet to a network saying, hey, wheels, stop. If you turn on the lights, there is a packet that's gonna say all the time, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. Imagine that you are just driving at night. If we are able to drop the, the on packet and just insert our own packet saying, turn off, turn off, turn off, the thing is that 
the lights of the car are gonna just turn off or turn on whenever we want. It's very, very scary. At the end, you can generate an accident. Worst case scenario is someone completely controlling your car, control your brakes, control your steering. You could definitely break or blow up portions of the engine. Nothing's ever fully secure if someone's dedicated enough. It'll always be a cat and mouse game. We have to secure that entire ecosystem. It used to be you locked the doors on your car and your valuables in your car were secure. Today, when you lock the doors on your car, your personal information is actually stored out at another cloud services. All of a sudden, that has a physical impact on our lives. Many of the standard things we would do on a PC to make the software secure, none of that was being done, zero. And so the kinds of bugs that we would find really, like, it almost felt like software archaeology. It's like, this was the kind of bug I would find in a PC back in 1993 when the internet had first taken off. From a Darwinian standpoint, they had never had to face adversaries, and so the code never had to be hardened against that. Now is, a, is the right time to identify if there are problems before there are people targeting them. We're in Glendale, California, where we're about to sit behind the wheel as Matt Solnick, security expert, car buff, and hacking wizard, hacks the car remotely. How's it going? You made it. Today is actually the first day I've had a chance to test. So you're testing it on us. This is my first time actually testing live with the person uh, on the car. In this case, I am controlling the CAN bus remotely over the cellular networks. The only thing coming off my laptop is my GSM motor. We had to move the telematics unit from a uh, newer setup to this because these don't come with it stock. Mm -hmm. That enables me to be able to control it remotely. What I'm going to do in the next little bit is actually remotely stop the engine of the vehicle. Okay. <laughs> Oh, all right, engine's dead. I can't move. I'm, I'm stuck. All right, bad time to go uphill. I'm gonna run through a few of the different controls of the car. So it's locked now. So I'm gonna send the unlock command. Sending sequence, sent. Give it a second to send over the network. Not bad. Let's see what else we can do. Uh, stop. Cool. You could start and stop the engine from the other side of the parking lot. How, how is that possible? Um, GSM networks, everything's cellular nowadays. When you say the other side of the parking lot, that could very well mean like the other side of the country too? Yeah. Huh. Right now he's going to show me how to remote kill the engine. So while I'm driving and he's outside the car, he's going to kill the entire engine. Okay, engine's dead. Uh, we're moving backwards now. The steering wheel is, there's no power steering. It's a little frightening. Thank God this is an empty parking lot. Did you have fun doing that to me? Oh, it was a lot of fun. Definitely the remote access to the car is the scariest. Through the cellular channel, in that case at arbitrary distance, uh, we demoed you know, 1,500 miles away. People speak about this thing being used by governments to generate accidents to important people. It can be just people, crazy people thinking about it or not, I don't know. Nowadays, there's no way to know if you have been hacked in a car. As for the true threats to life or limb, it's doable, it's certainly doable, but if you don't have a risk of being assassinated normally, then you don't have a risk of being assassinated from someone hacking your car. 
if I just want to take you out, much easier to just shoot you. Who knows, maybe people will come up with ransomware schemes, like I have locked your car and it won't start unless you pay me some money. The traditional consumer car is not the only connected vehicle out there. Uh, airplanes, for example, have Wi-Fi on board. Warfighting vehicles, tanks, are connected so they can communicate uh, with battlefield operators. I think people should hack more. I mean, hack in the good way. Of course, there are a lot of money that you can earn if you do evil stuff. But uh, I think that the proper way to maintain a system secure is hacking it. There's a really great white hat community out there that really focuses on bringing security issues to the forefront, uh, showing people and working with manufacturers uh, where vulnerabilities lie in different systems. What I do, as well as my fellow white hats, is try to help you know, the general IT community and finding these issues before someone malicious does. It's a new field, it's a new frontier for a lot of people to look at. And that's why people like myself publicly talk about it. People need to know about it. This could affect someone's life. They took someone very precious to me. Now, I'm coming for them. Rated M for Mature. PlayStation.